You welcome to the Policy Council. My name is Okwemi Agbaje. Today I look at an unusual book with an unusual author, a relatively young Nigerian who has written an economics textbook for young entrepreneurs, except that it's an unusual economics textbook. It's called Business at the Speed of Rema. Enjoy the program. You welcome back. It's still the Policy Council, and we're talking about economics for young entrepreneurs. I have um, the author of that book here will be going through the book. He's um, a graduate of Urban and Regional Planning, um, has made a career in financial analysis and consulting, worked with capital partners, um, co essentially consults for small businesses, and serves as CEO of a quick service restaurant group. Um, my guest is Olufisayo Okusonya. You're welcome to the Policy Council. Thank you. Okay, so um, it's interesting. You, you studied Urbana Regional Planning. How, how did you end up in, in finance and financial analysis and consulting? Uh, thank you. One of the things that I try to do at every point in my life is to learn mm. and take action from what I've learned. Mm. I'll tell you the defining point in when I decided that I wasn't going to practice urban original planning. In the university system, there's a point where you go for what they call an industrial attachment. Mm -hmm. And I had gotten a note to go to the urban original planning board to work. I sat down at the urban original planning board <laughs> and the director came in and he was shouting at some of his employees for something very little. And I looked and I took a good look at the setting, and I said to myself, this is not going to happen. Mm. Quietly with the letter and the, no the note I had in my hand, I got up and walked out quietly. Mm. And I decided that there has to be something better in life than mm -hmm. this. And that's how I moved into finance. Now, the only way to describe it is that it was a shot in the dark. Mm. I knew I had to do something, and my rule in life is whatever your hand finds to do, do. Mm. And as I started to do what my hands found to do, gradually I started to master it, and I started to like it. Mm. To be perfectly honest with you, all I knew when I graduated school was that I wanted to go to work wearing a suit. Mm. I wanted to drive in my AC car and go to work wearing a suit. That's all I knew. <laughs> So I tell young people, I say, if that's all you knew, you're in good company. <laughs> and when I arrived at my first day of work, I had no idea until the second year what I really wanted to do. What was your first day of work? Where my, was that? My first day of work was in Capital Partners. Okay. I didn't even have the suit. <laughs> all I had was a white shirt <laughs> and a tie. I just knew that you had to press the white shirt well. And you had to look the part. Mm. And gradually... I remember that first day of work, because it was consulting, it was training. So we resumed into training, and we were learning financial statement analysis. And I said, wow, I can really be good at this. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, as I told myself that day, I'm going to be the best at this. And that's how I ended up in finance. Mm. Interesting. And then you ended up being an author. Why, why did you decide to write a book? I've been trying to write a book for a long time, mm. because I had thoughts. So I started blogging, and I thought I was young, so I never ever put it to paper. After a while, I decided that, look, when you leave this earth, you have to be remembered for something, and most likely it's what you put into print. Mm. And so I braved it, wrote the book, self-published it myself, and amazingly, it's gotten a lot of acceptance. Mm. It's, it's titled, it's, it's interesting, Business at the Speed of Rema. What, what does that mean? Rema is spiritual understanding of the truth regarding any subject matter. Some people believe that the truth is relative. Mm. I believe that there can only be one truth. Mm. And so the idea is, if your understanding of the truth regarding people is complete, then you will have wholesome relationships. Mm. If your understanding of the truth regarding money is complete, then you would have a good uh, 
status, like bank account and all that. Or you could decide if your understanding of the truth about money is complete, you could decide you don't want it. Well. Mother Teresa did. I guess that's... And I don't think she didn't understand what money Exactly, was exactly. Mm. But um, the reason I went to write such a book mm. was because I found that young people just wanted money. Mm. And they didn't understand that money comes after you get... Money is better after you have certain things. Because mm. money gives you three powers. Mm. It gives you the power of choice. Mm. You don't have to ask... You can ask for anything in any color mm. if you have the right amount. Mm. Money gives you the power of motion. You don't ask anybody's permission before you do what you want to do. And money gives you the power of privacy or secrecy. Mm. You can do and undo and nobody gets to find about about. So it's dangerous power. Mm. So with that power, there needs to be some level of understanding. Mm. And so that's one of the reasons why I decided to write. Mm. You need to understand the responsibility that comes with managing money and managing people. Interesting. Well, it's an interesting way to start the discussion. I'm talking with a young author, not so young, Olufisaye or Kunsoya. And we're talking about business at the speed of Rema, essentially economics for young entrepreneurs. We'll be right back. Government wants our city to become a mega modern city. And so, government is providing modern markets for us to carry out our business. Now, this requires money, so we need to pay our taxes to help government to help us. I pay my taxes. I hope you've paid yours. I pay. Pay your tax. It's your civic responsibility. It's your duty. It's the law. Welcome back. It's still the Policy Council. I'm talking to Olufisayo Kunsaya, who has written an interesting book called Business at the Speed of Rema. It's economics for young entrepreneurs, according to Olufisayo. And he argues that God, or the spiritual, or, or Rema, something he calls Rema, revelation, can direct you on the economy and business. Now, I, I'm, I, I won't say I disagree with you, I agree with you, but I've studied economics, business, strategy, and all of those, and I've not seen anywhere about the spiritual in them. Are you, are you sure that economic principles accommodate such principles? Absolutely, without a doubt. Mm. I believe that a lot of economic principles that we use today mm. are found in the Bible. Mm. Because the earth itself was based on laws mm. that God himself set in place. So he says, for instance, seed time and harvest time shall not cease. So we plant and we reap. Mm -hmm. That's an economic principle in itself. That you will reap what you sow, maybe not where you sow, but what you sow. That's an economic principle in itself. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, if you, and evidence abounds in a lot of biographies that a lot of men get to a point where they cannot explain how something happened and they exploded, or their career exploded. Mark, uh, Mr. Gladwell calls it the tipping point. What is that thing that just makes it tip? There is the force. One of the owners of, the, of, of a big bank in Nigeria, in his biography, called it, he said, it's guided by the invisible hands of the Almighty. Mm. So economics does have a role to play, it, or the spiritual again, does have like, a role. Like I said, I will not express my personal opinion on this, but let me challenge that. And atheists who, the atheists who have made billions yeah. and who will argue that it was luck, serendipity. In strategy literature, what you're describing is described as serendipity. Yeah. Just being at the right place at the right time and occurrence by chance, some time and chance, opportunity that came. Yeah. So, 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 but so, uh, are you sure that you can Persuade uh, an atheist about these principles okay. of this. Uh, first of all, uh, let me say that I'm not setting out to persuade an atheist. <laughs> okay, a good point. <laughs> Interestingly, Excellent point. You know, so, and I would agree with you that a lot of people without this make a lot of money mm. and a lot of that. Mm. But there's something uh, a bit more mm. than that. And that is the fact that we can use some of these principles 
before any strategy book was written, mm. the Bible was written. Delegation of authority was written when Jethro said to Moses, do this, don't kill yourself. Mm. You know, so before anything was written, the Bible was written, and we take literally those principles, and we can literally uh, 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 apply those principles. Leadership, strategy. Strategy is about three pillars. The operating environment, the internal capacity, and your financial target, or whatever your desires. Everything you, every decision you make in strategy is about assumptions about those three pillars. And your strategy is as good as your assumptions are. So the more knowledge you have about those three pillars, the more, the better your strategy is. Mm. What I am saying with this book is that you can get your knowledge about those three pillars from a different source. Mm. What makes men who have no hope sit down and say in their heart that we can build a corporation? There's a bit more than luck or serendipity mm. in there. Mm. And they go ahead. Even someone like uh, Napoleon Hill, in his book Think and Grow Rich, talks about auto-suggestion, which is the, what the Bible calls confession. <laughs> Interesting. And then in his first chapter, he talks about faith. Hmm. Now, you, you talk about two parallel economies. Well, what do you mean in your book? Okay. Now, the economic realities we've been taught in school, hmm. and we have to... I have a problem with that ed education system, but I won't go into that. Mm. And that education system conditions us to learn certain things. But if you study your Bible, and if you study books, and if you study the environment, you will find that sometimes things go against what you've learned. So graduates come and join what I call the rat race. And I was encouraged to join the rat race. But when I came out, I wanted to go for my master's degree. And I asked myself, why do you want to go for my, my, your master's degree abroad? Because everybody's doing it. Because that's the trend. That's what it is. If you get a 2-1, you get a job. After a while, if you go and improve yourself by getting a master's abroad, you can traject. Mm -hmm. I don't have a master's from any university abroad. But I employ people that have master's from university abroad, universities abroad. Right? Now, I took another route, and I tell people that the business model that I operate, I've never seen it anywhere before. It was given to me by God. And that business model is to support small... I started supporting small businesses when people were not interested, when nobody saw it. But I saw it. Mm. I saw it because I wasn't looking at traditional knowledge, which was taught in school. I saw it because I was looking at something else. What I had is what I call Rema. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, we'll continue this conversation about uh, business at the speed of Rema, or revelation of spiritual understanding, as Olufisayo Kunsoya puts it. We'll be right back. You welcome back. I'm having this interesting conversation with Olufisayo Okunsoya. He's written an economics textbook for young entrepreneurs, an unusual one called Business at the Speed of Rema. Fisayo, let me ask you something else you say in your book. You say that um, there is no scarcity in this economy. What, what do yes. you mean? Basic economics tells us it's about scarcity and yes. choice. And so the idea is that we are all chasing after scarce resources. Mm. I disagree. Mm. Now, the reason I disagree is this, that the earth is the Lord's. Hmm. And Beautiful resources nice will come to you as you need them, as you are ready to use them. Hmm. Sometimes when people say that they don't have capital, what they are saying actually is that they are lazy and they haven't started any process of doing anything. Hmm. I started with nothing. And basically what I mean is when I left school, my first job, I slept on the rug of my friend's BQ for six months. That is nothing. Now, people are looking for, and this is to young graduates, they are looking for the ideal job. But I told someone, for instance, that I can never be broke because I can find something to do. There's always something to do. 
And so I start with that something, I build up on it, move to the next something, build up on it, and before you know it, I have all the capital I need. Hmm. So a lot of the people who are here saying, oh, this country is this way, that, this country is that way, there is no capital, are people who just don't want to put, get their hands dirty and do things. Hmm. There's something else you write in your book about, I'm interested in two interesting sounding concepts called systems intelligence and then motion sensitive resources. What do you mean about Fantastic. This? You know, just like you go into a door, and this technology I also believe was gotten from the Bible. <laughs> You're going into a door, and it's a glass door, but it's firmly shut. Mm. As you approach it, it opens. And this is how opportunity is. Mm. As you approach it, it opens. So even Jesus said, don't consider the wind. Mm. He said, the harvest is plenty, laborers are few. Mm. Now, systems intelligence is, intel is, is interesting because I saw it in the Bible. He said, the pillars of the earth belong to the world. Mm. And on top of it, he placed, it be belongs to the Lord, sorry. And on top of it, he placed the world. Mm. Now, let me get a bit technical. The earth is the container of resources, crude oil, raw talent. Everything that is in its raw state is in the earth, lives in the earth. The world is the system that governs the distribution of those resources. So the Bible says the pillars of the earth or the talents belong to the Lord. On top of that talent, he placed a system to govern the distribution. What this means is that the man, talented man, who doesn't build a system around anything and everything he does will end up poor. Mm. A system of rehearsal can turn a talented pianist into a maestro. Mm. The difference between talent and skill is a system of rehearsal. And so people will pay you a stipend for your talent, but they will pay you a premium for your skills. And the problem is getting down to the work and building a system around your talent. Now let me say this to Mr. Baje, that the country that stays at the earth level or the talent level or the raw crude level will always serve countries that have built systems. Mm. So that's the difference between refining crude oil and exporting. Exactly. Exporting. And now Israel says they are send, selling anti-terrorism uh, anti -terrorism systems to us. Israel is a landlocked country, no natural resources. Mm. But they are selling a system to us. Mm. Nigeria is full of natural resources. We are selling no crude earth yeah. to the world. Yeah. And so we will continue to serve them yeah. until we learn to learn system intelligence. There's something else you say that I'm interested in. It's a quote from the scriptures, but it says, In all labor there is profit, but the task, the talk of the lips tends towards penury. Mm. And you talk a lot about that in your book. What, what's that about? I see a lot of young people talk about things they want to do. And they have one idea. They've not executed that one, they have another idea. My advice is simple, get a job. Just get a job. If I was really broke and I didn't have anything to do, I can wash cars. If I wash someone's car, you give me 500 naira. If I can do four in a day, I will eat. And that's my practical approach to life. When I wanted to start consulting, I started doing business plans for cheap. But I knew my business plans were premium. But guess what? I started getting better at it. Now, I do it. So in all labor, there is profit. There's something you can get out of your skill. It's never enough to just sit down and say, I'm waiting. And talk about it. Okay, let's take a time out. I'm enjoying this conversation with Olufisai Okosaya. He has some unusual economic principles, which I like, um, and which are based on scripture. We'll be right back. Who knows Abi better thing? Abi who know like better thing? Ha. Hmm. Who this fine fine things where they see so? Now money go make they take do and now. Abi, I sing. It's like you know. I mean, excuse me. I dey pay my tax. I dey do it thing. I dey pay my tax. Say you don't pay your own tax. If you pay your tax, I pay. Pay your tax. It's your civic responsibility. It's your duty. It's the law. You welcome back. It's my final segment with an author, Olufisayo Kusoya. He's written Business at the Speed of Rema, 
It's unusual economics for young entrepreneurs, according to him. And he says a lot of interesting things. Fisai, let me run quickly through some of the other things you say. So you say that you, you cancel against Bible and corruption. And you argue that you can do it in this environment without Bible. How, do, how does one do that? First of all, let me say that we have done it. Hmm. Now, it is not a problem of corruption. It's a problem of hunger. Hmm. And it's a problem of upbringing. Now, I personally believe that if you can overcome the hunger problem when you have nothing, you will not steal when you have money. The reason why people steal is that our space and time horizon is limited to me, myself, my family, for this generation and till the, the next generation. The idea is this. I remember when, and I shared it in the book, I was still a youth copper. I was probably a third my size Yeah, now. I found that so interesting. <laughs> I was probably a third of this, this size. And you know that every youth copper's dream is to get that dream job. Mm -hmm. So everybody, every weekend was running to go and write an interview. But somehow I knew that that wasn't for me. And then someone called me and reluctantly I went and we dropped our CVs. At the point at which we dropped our CVs, we went back and then someone called and started saying that we need to drop transport money for the CVs to get to Lagos. I was serving a choir bomb at the time. Inside of me, I knew hmm. that there was no way. That the way you enter the industry is the way you will sustain your growth. Hmm. If you bribe the boys in HR to enter now, the day it's time to promote you, they will call you and save us. Hmm. And so I knew that there was no way. Hmm. And so I went back and prayed about it. And this is where Rema is like light. Hmm. When you get something, if you read the Bible, it could just be a scripture. If not, so your friend might just be talking to you and it's just like, some people call it that eureka, eureka moment where you, it's as if life flashes in your mind. And I knew that it was going to be okay. I knew that I did not need to collect that job. Now, let me put this caveat on the table. As I started business, I learned that you have to be willing to walk away, which means lose the potential revenue that could come from a job. This is how we can build this country. Mm. You have to be willing to walk away. Excellent. Let, let, you, you also say meek people are very strong people. Now, that's also counterintuitive. Business yeah. people are supposed to be ruthless and you know, even kill their enemies if they have to. Yeah. So. Meekness is not weakness. Mm. Meekness is power under control. Mm. Meekness means what I can do in my power. I refuse to do in my wisdom. Mm. And so, if I can go into business with meekness, what I found is that someone I could have hurt or reacted in a funny way to, I meet him further down the line and he's recommending me because he's like, I cannot believe that every, after everything I put this young man through, he still came. I have clients that... As a young man, you will spend time. And you know as a consultant, you sell time. You will spend time with them, and they have not paid. I have clients that have been developing their business plans for three years. They didn't pay. And then what happens? The guy hits a big opportunity. He cannot think of anybody else. But conventional wisdom will teach you, no, he must pay, and all that. Yes, I'm not saying do work for free. But I'm saying that at some point, even if you are going to turn someone down, you must do it with a sense of respect. Mm. And this is one thing that young people don't want to do. Respect this generation that's coming before us and approach whatever you do with gentility and meekness. Hmm. Let me take a final insight from your book. You say kings do not hustle. You are counseling people against hustling. How are people supposed to make money in Nigeria without hustling? That's, again, contrary to conventional wisdom. Yoruba people say that going around, running from place to place does not turn you wealthy. Oh. And I learned it from my mom. Hmm. This she taught me personally. That it is not in the duration, it's in what you put into it. Hmm. You can do one thing and do it properly. I decided when I started financial services because I realized that I did not have the pedigree or the background, that I was going to be the best at it. What that means, or what that meant to me at the time, 
was that I will invest in it. If you are doing so many things, where do you have time to build competence? So building competence and doing so many things. Now, to tell you the truth, I'm fortunate because I had good teachers. I had people, I would not read a book except they said read it. And that took some meekness humility. also. Humility. They say, I think you need to read this book. I will argue. But I will go and read it. And so I started building, comp I had a teacher in human resources, dedicated. I had a teacher in strategy. I had a teacher in financial statement analysis. All those things I do today, and I'm pretty good at what I do, because I decided that this is what, I don't do contracts. Mm. Okay. Um, you autograph your fee for coming on the policy council is to autograph a copy of Business at the Speed of Rema. I think it's an interesting book. I think it's a different perspective, and I'm sure those who choose to get a copy of it will spend at least some one or two hours of their lives understanding this unusual perspective. We'll be right back. I've deeply enjoyed my conversation with Olufisayo Okunsanya. I, I understand the things he talks about. There are insights that one can get that are not necessarily rational. I also believe that much of the learning of today have roots in principles that go far, far, far into the past and derive from sources that are unconventional, according to modern learning. I enjoy as many of you as can read the book, to read it, um, and to get the insights that you can from it. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.